the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. How many came to give God praise this morning? Amen. And to give God praise, you got to forget about yourself. Amen. Concentrate on him and worship him. Come on, we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. And your God. Down before him, heaven and earth. Down before him, what a mighty God we Come on, lift your voice again and say, we serve a mighty God. Yeah, yeah. How many are really serving this morning? Come on, Soprano. That's it, that's it. Everybody, say it again. We serve a mighty God. Come on, Sopranos, praise him. Say it, y'all, say it. Come on, Altos, what you say? Just say, y'all. We serve a mighty God. Everybody lift your voice and say, Praise Him. He's worthy. Yes. So we serve. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We told the mighty God. Come on, all of the house there, pray there. Yeah, what you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's worthy of all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. We exalt him. We magnify him. Come on, lift your hands and say, Pray there. He's worthy. Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah, yes. How many of serve a mighty God this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving How many are going to bless it? I will bless thee, oh Lord. Come on, cry you with my hands. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. And my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of praise giving. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I will bless thee, oh Lord. Say it again. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless the O Lord. I will bless the O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless the O Lord. I will bless the O Lord. Let's say it one more time for Jesus. I will bless the O Lord. With 
the heart of faith giving. Yeah. I will bless. I will bless you, oh Lord. With the heart of faith giving. With the heart of faith giving. I will bless the O oh Lord. How many really came to bless him? How many came to just exalt him? Hallelujah. Not to sit down on him, but to give him praise. I will bless. I will bless the O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. Good morning, Central. Good morning. For all those who are able to stand, will you please stand? Let us pray. Our God and the Father, we humbly beseech your master's throne of grace. We want to say thank you, thank you Lord. for being the God that you are. When we thought not, nothing of ourselves, Lord, you, you, you watch over us through the still watches of last night. But yes, early this morning, you touch us with the finger of love, cause us to rise in the right minds with the blood running warm to our veins. We want to thank you, God, for the activities of our limbs. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will look down upon us one more time. We ask that, God, that you will take perfect charge concerning this service. Bless everyone that gathered here this morning. Bless the one, O oh God, that is about to bring forth the word. We pray you all and I say with power from on high, that as you speak to us, our hearts may be blessed and encouraged to go every step of the journey. Bless us, O oh God, and take us through while we further wait upon you. In the name of the precious Son of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. selection by the deliverance of praise callers. After that, we'll have the announcement of the announcement and resignation of victors.
this week's upcoming events. Report card for the fourth marking period of 2015-2016 school term are due. Please place all copies in the academic recognition mailbox located in room 104. The deadline to submit copies of report cards is Tuesday, June 14th by 5 p.m. Pastor Ezel will preach at Taylor Memorial Baptist Church Friday, June 17th at 7.30 p.m. The male chorus will accompany the pastor. Graduates and academic award recognition will be held on Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m. in the Family Life Center. Graduate Recognition Day will be held on Sunday, June 26th during the 11 a.m. worship service. Our very own Cortland Thomas will be the speaker for this momentous occasion. The Central Baptist Church Summer Enrichment Program, June 6th through August 12th, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. daily. The registration fee is $50 and the weekly fee is $75 per child. Pastor Ezel's Itinerary, Antioch Baptist Church, Tuesday, June 21st, 7.30 p.m. New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church, Sunday, June 26th, 3 p.m. Today's scripture will be preference from Genesis, the 39th chapter, 1st through the 5th verse. Church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise in the building. Uh, we can do better than that. We serve a God who's worthy to be praised. Let's give God a hand clap of praise in the building. Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Has the Lord been good to you? I mean, has the Lord really been good to you? Come on, let's give him the highest praise in the building. Give him the highest praise in the building, which is hallelujah. Watch me. Amen, amen. What an awesome God we serve, and he's worthy to be praised. We thank God for our presiding officer this morning, uh, leading us in prayer, Reverend Winslow Harrison. For the presence of Reverend Clarence Atterbury and for Reverend Kenneth Wilson. For each of you, my brothers and sisters, on this Christian journey, we say good morning to you. Morning. This past week, we had an awesome week in Vacation Bible School. Amen. All week long, every night, it was just like Jacob's Ladder that we're taking every round and we're going higher and higher. And we cultivated that with our picnic and saluted shows on this past Saturday. Amen. Every week was great, the picnic was great, but after that week, you feel like you don't have no energy left. Amen, somebody. We're going to have to separate the picnic from the vacation Bible school and do that at a separate time. There's a lot doing it all together in one week. Amen. Then I don't know why we came up with this bright idea. I'll take the blame for it, but on Friday night, after we finished vacation Bible school, I told all the young people that, if y'all want to stay and play ball and hang out in the gym, the 12 o'clock I hang with you. That wasn't the best idea. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. And so we just had a great time. I tell them, if y'all want to do music, you want to do basketball, long the music is clean music, we'll just hang out here together. Amen. Mamas and grandmamas, everybody was trying to drag them out. They just did not want to leave. Amen. But we just had a good time in fellowship together. 
We thank God for the entire staff for Vacation Bible School, our superintendent of our Sunday School, Deacon Cecil Thomas, our director of Bible School, uh, Deaconess um, Julie Livingston. And we thank God so much for all the effort. And everybody on the staff that worked with them, y'all did another marvelous job. Amen. Amen, somebody. And I never seen teachers and staff take so much pride in the decorating of the rooms. Amen. I looked through every room was decorated. I all that looked pretty, but I, we don't want to see the, any paint off the wall. Amen. When you take down all that pretty decoration, amen, you can't even see the blue on the wall anymore. Amen. And we would like for it to be returned to the original blue. Somebody said the Fort Valley State College blue, the original blue. Amen. As we walk down the halls on tomorrow, we just had a great time in fellowship. I like seeing people enjoy Jesus. Amen. Amen. And sometimes it's church for we can be so serious. Amen, somebody. You don't have to be serious and sad and depressed to be a good Christian. Amen. I don't know. Y'all, the Bible said, let your light shine. So that others may see your good work and not that we're seeking the glory, but that God may get the glory. Amen. So we thank God so much. Let us remind you that on our report cards, the deadline is Tuesday, June the 14th by 5 p.m. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. When you go through these doors right here and make a left, the room right on the right there, which is room 104, there's a black box that's on the wall place the report cards in that box amen they must be in by this tuesday five o'clock we will clear the report cards that are in there out uh deacon that's ernestino barry director govan will sign off on all report cards in there now you can see it was in there but once they take about tuesday if it's not in there it's not in there it might miraculously show up on wednesday but it wasn't in there on tuesday amen somebody it's important as people that we, we understand how to meet deadlines and do things on time. Amen. We were told a story about a young man who missed a, almost $200,000 scholarship because his application had to be in by a certain time. And he got that five or ten minutes late with his application. They turned it down because then if you're going to be the type of student we're looking for, we expect you to do things on time. I think that that school probably went to John Edwards University. Amen. Say, so if you're going to do it, it got to be done. Oh, time. <laughs> Amen. So they got it there. He missed out on a great opportunity because he just didn't get it in. Or somebody will give you 200000 for four years. You need to get it in on time. Amen. So it's important that as parents, we teach our children the importance of doing things on time. Amen. So we ask you to make sure. We also ask you to fill out your academic recognition form. Our academic banquet for our young people is June the 24th on that Friday night. Amen. Now remember the academic recognition banquet. We also have recognition forms. Some of you have been attaching those to your report cards and that's fine. They're in the vestibule and they're also in the back of the church. Well, on that academic recognition form, you can fill out three things that your child has accomplished during the school year. And we're going to read those three things out that Friday night. We don't get a chance to do it on that Sunday, but we're going to do it on that Friday night. So make sure if your child has accomplished those things during the school year that we can read it, recognize them, and encourage them. We do this for the sake of encouraging our young people. Amen. Everybody may not hit a, hit a home run with a baseball. They may not throw a football 100 yards to dunk a basketball. But they're doing some creative things in school, and we want to recognize them on that night. Also, on that Friday night, which is June the 24th, we're giving out our academic honor roll recognition. Amen. Normally we do it on Sundays, but the last during the last portion of the year we do it on that academic recognition banquet. So if your child has made the honor roll for the final marking period, because we will already have their report cards and whatnot, we're going to recognize them on that Friday night for that academic honor roll recognition as well. So we're looking for a great time to try to make a positive impact on our young people. I do not believe that our young people are lost generation. 
I do not believe what the media say that our young people, that when you pull on the report that African American young people are the only ones in trouble. I just don't believe that. I believe there's a stereotype that's going on and we can't buy into the hype. I wish somebody would hear me here. We cannot buy into the hype. Amen. If we don't encourage our children, if our church don't encourage our children, if people who look like us, if we don't encourage one another, we can't expect nobody else to do it for us. Amen, somebody. You know what I'm you, you got to learn to lift yourself and lift people around you up. You can't be jealous over what somebody else is doing. I'm just glad that God blessed them. I mean, because God is still in the blessing business. He's going to bless you and I just the same way. Amen. Amen. Come on here and praise God early this morning because he still is in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. Is everybody clear on those two things? Honor roll. By Tuesday at 5 o'clock. All right? Because your report cards are turned in, so that's going to determine the honor roll. And then your forms that you fill out for academic recognition. We want that Friday night to be a very special night for our young people. And then our graduates, we have graduates from school, six or seven, I think, this year. Each one of them will give a three to five minute presentation on that night. And I know no graduate would get up and give a presentation without thanking those who've been with you all the time. Amen, somebody. I don't care how mad you get about the house rules that you couldn't come in when you want or you couldn't go when you want to. But we ought to have enough to just thank you, say thank you, mama, and thank you, dad. No message should not close without telling those who paid a price for you thank you for the much that they've done along those lines. Amen. See, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not here because I've been so good. I had somebody praying for me. I had a mama praying for me. Even when I could not pray for myself. Uh, how many know somebody prayed for you? Somebody took the time. How many know when you were getting ready to do something wrong, somehow the spirit touched you and you started doing the right thing because mama was praying while you was out there playing. I, I wish I had a praying church in there. I'm glad that somebody prayed for me. Anybody glad this morning that somebody prayed for you? Somebody had you on your, their mind. Somebody took the time to call your name in prayer. For we serve a prayer in God. And he's able to do anything but fail. Amen. Let us all stand. Let us stand. Let us stand as we prepare to bring God's tithes and our offering into the storehouse. As we prepare to bring God's tithes and our offering into the storehouse. Do you know it's a joy to be able to give back to God? Hmm? Your job may not be the best job, but you know it's good to have one. And can I, can I draw something in free? Don't get so mad and upset you go quit a job and don't have another one to go to. It's always easy to find one when you have one. Because when you go then, you don't have the attitude that I got to get this one. You know, I have one. Amen. No, don't get don't get so bold and buff up talking about I'm gonna lead these folks. You got a mortgage next week. <laughs> Amen, somebody. The Lord will make a way for you, but the Lord gives you wisdom along the way. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with. We truly believe as the songwriter says, you cannot be God-given, no matter how hard you try. For the more we give to God, the more the Lord will give back to us. Our receipt of our giving is not always monetarily, but just to have good health is a blessing. Just to have peace of mind is a blessing. Just to have joy divine is a blessing. Just to have Jesus on your mind is a blessing. So we thank you for your manifold blessings that you have given to us. So we come right now because the words that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So we're happy. We're excited to be able to bring your tithes, to be able to bring your offering, to have an opportunity to give the capital campaign. Our cup is running over. So we come now to say thank you for the opportunity to give back to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Outside our face the wall, inside our face each other. Follow the direction of our ushers.
Visitors, please stand and remain standing. If you're visiting with us for the first time, will you stand and remain standing? Amen, amen. Again, we say thank you for visiting with us on this morning. We realize that there are many other churches around the greater Columbia area that you could have attended this morning, but we're so thankful that the Lord led you to be with, here, with us here at the Central Baptist Church. Know that you honor us by your presence with us. We thank God for you. We pray that our worship service will be a blessing to you. We pray that you will come back and visit with us again. And when you do, please, ma'am, please, sir, bring a friend with you. Let's give our visitors a one fan at this time. Thank y'all so much. Amen. We had Cottrell to put the scripture back up on the screen to give you a chance to write the scripture down so that you'll be to the scripture as we move toward the reading of God's word. Amen. I was leading us in our scriptures that I opened up for the preach word, but at this time, we're going to have a selection by the deliverance of praise. Carl Liz, we're proud to our selection. 
we want to acknowledge to uh, Deacon John Edwards and Deaconess Julia Edwards that we're praying Julia Edwards that we're praying for you and praying for your family and the passing of her sister and his sister in law, Sister Davenport, amen, from Zion Baptist Church on Washington Street. The service will be Tuesday at one o'clock, amen. Of course, we will be there in support of you. I called Deaconess Edward last night to have prayer with her to let you know that we're praying for you and we're praying with you. Amen. Know that you have the full support of this church and the pastor will be with you during the time. Amen. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Amen. At this time, we have our selection followed by the preach word. Give him the glory. The glory. Yeah, yeah. The whoa, 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 whoa. The glory. Give him the praise. The praise. They woke me up. Started me on my way. Come on now. The glory. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Oh, 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 I came to praise him the morning. What he did for you woke me up. Started me on my way. Yeah. Give him the praise. Everybody say, Come on, I've got a right to praise him. Who saved my soul and made the whole? You brought me out without a doubt. I've got a right to praise him. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You can't tell it what you tell it. I've got a right. I've got a right to pray. Oh, yeah. Woke me up. Started me 
glory my way. Give him the glory. 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 Because he's been good. Because he's been kind. Lord, I love you. Yeah. Lord, I'm gonna pray. Yeah. Oh, give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the, the praise.
Let church say amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for, for that selection. Amen. Thank you for the anointing that was coming from the musical instruments. Amen. Amen. Um, when I was growing up, we called them the drum, but on the percussion. And so we thank God for little Sam as he celebrated his birthday. Amen, somebody. He was playing like he was celebrating it this morning. <laughs> All up in the house representing Fairfield County. <laughs> Fairfield Central High School. Amen, somebody. I just believe if you're going to come to church, you might as well have church. <laughs> if I don't want to have church, I just need to stay home. But if I'm, if I'm going to get up and get dressed and drive and do all that stuff to come to church, we might as well just have church. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. Let's look at our scripture reading from Genesis 39. Genesis 39, beginning at verse number 1. Genesis 39, verse number 1. Whatever your custom is in your church, when you're reading the scripture, do as according to the custom. Our custom is to stand. Amen, somebody. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand before we go any farther. You don't have to tell folks you got the favor of God. It'll show. Yes. <laughs> Verse number four. And Joseph found grace in his sight. Grace, God's unmerited favor. Grace not getting what we deserve, but getting what we don't deserve. And he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. Finally, verse 5 says, And it came to pass from the time that he made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the house was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. When you have the favor and the grace upon the Lord on your life, wherever you go, going to be blessed. <laughs> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wherever you go, going to be blessed. Remember this month, we're looking at the life of Joseph. Last week, we looked at Joseph in the pit. Today we want to look at Joseph at Potiphar's house. Next week we want to look at Joseph in prison. Then finally we want to look at Joseph in the palace. Just keep the four P's with your pit, Potiphar, prison, and palace. Look at the elevation of Joseph. Let me say this, my brothers and sisters. Everyone in here has made a trip to Potiphar's house. Let me say that again for some of you who think that I'm not speaking directly to you. Everyone in here has made a trip to Potiphar's house. Amen, somebody. Either you thought about it and then act upon it, or you thought about it and did act upon it. Nobody in here is exempt from Potiphar's house. Because we all face very various trials, tribulations, and temptation. Hmm? 
I wish I had a praying church in here. We all have had our shares of ups and downs. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, as I told you last week, you were in the pit. Let me rephrase that. When I say you were in the pit, it exempts me. You didn't get that. Last week, we were in the pit. And I reminded you that when you find yourself in a pit, that your pit is not permanent. You're going through, but it won't last forever. But the sad thing about it, when you're in the pit, it seems like it's forever. You know the night is long, but your question is, how long is the night? You know that joy will come in the morning, but can I make it through the night in order to get to my morning time joy? I want you to know that your pit is not permanent. And last week we, went, we reminded ourselves when we found ourselves in the pit because it's not permanent that God can protect us even while we're in the pit. Remember that Joseph was thrown in the pit but it said that there was no water in the pit. That the pit was empty. So even though they tried to hurt him, they wind up blessing him because God had already protected him in the midst of the pit. Then I reminded you that the pit is nothing but preparation for our old trip in order to the palace. If I never had any burdens, I wouldn't know that he was a burden barrier. If I never had a storm, I wouldn't know that he's my shelter in the time of the storm. So I thank God for every pit that I ever had to go through. And I've learned that I don't have to wait to come out the pit to give God praise and glory. But I don't have to wait while I'm in the pit. But on my way to the pit, on my way to where somebody's trying to hurt me, all I got to do is to break out into a praise and, and give God praise on my way to the pit. And uh, God will take care of the pit before I even get to the pit. I, well, I wish I had some witnesses here that you've learned to praise God in the calm and you learn to praise God in the storm. You learn to praise God when you're up and you learn to praise God when when you're down and you learn to praise God when you're happy and you learn to praise God when you're sad you learn to praise God when you're well and you learn to praise God when you're sick uh, you learn to praise God with money in your pocket you learn to praise God when you didn't have a dime you learn to praise God when people talk good about you you learn to praise God when they lie on you you learn to praise God for your friends uh, you learn to praise God for your enemies do I have anybody here who's learned to praise God at all the time that I will bless the Lord at all time that his praise will be continually in my mouth uh, oh taste and see that the Lord is good is there anybody testimony here that the Lord is good I, I did not say the Lord was good I did not say the Lord might be good but I said the Lord is good uh, he's good right now is there anybody testimony here in spite of all the stuff I've done and in spite of what I've been through that the Lord is still good uh, somebody shout still good uh, the Lord is still good and uh, cause the Lord is good uh, I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through but I've learned to praise him anyhow somebody shout anyhow uh, shout anyhow uh, shout anyhow do I have any anyhow praises in the building do I have any anyhow praises in the house uh, do I have any right now praises in the building somebody Somebody shout right now. Right now we'll praise them. Shout right now. Right now we'll bless them. Shout right now. Right now we'll open up my mouth. Shout right now. Right now I'll nod my head. Shout right now. Right now I'll pat my feet. Shout right now. I'm going to give it my best praise right now. Tomorrow is not promised. Later on is not promised. This evening is not promised. So I'm going to praise him. Shout right now. My brothers and sisters, everyone has an Achilles heel of some type of weakness. A saint is nothing but a sinner who fell down but got back up again. <laughs> Let me say that again. A saint is nothing but a sinner who fell down but got back up again. Romans clarified some things for me and 
Romans the third chapter the 10th verse says as it is written there's none righteous no not one Romans 3.23 says for all have seen it then said for y'all have seen it said for all have seen and come short of the glory of God now these verses are not permission to go sin but these verses are permission to say that because of our sinful nature no one has a right to think that they're above anybody all have seen and come short of the glory of God Isaiah 64 and 6 but we all are unclean things and in all our righteousness we are nothing but filthy rags Romans 7, 18 and 19 remind us for I know that in me that's in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform which is good I find not. For the good that I would do, I find myself not doing. But evil which I would not, that I do. Ah, uh, but let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, we, we all have a common adversary. We don't have to fight one another. Let me say that again. We don't have to fight against one another. We all have a common adversary, and his name is Satan. Job 1, 6, and 7, and 9, that's how, that was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Anytime there's a gathering, don't you think that Satan is not present? Huh? And the Lord said unto Satan, Where are you coming from, Satan? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. I'm just walking up and down it. Uh, and then 1 Peter 5 and 8 said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. John 10 and 10 said, The thief cometh not, but for the seal and the kill. And to destroy, but the Lord said, I come that you might have life, and that you might have life more abundantly. Romans 10 and 8 remind us that even though we've fallen short, even though we make mistakes, Romans says, That word is now the even in my mouth and our heart. That is the word of faith which is sweet, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You better tell folks when they come down hard on you, don't judge me. Tell them you don't have a heaven nor hell. Tell them, tell them don't judge me. Tell them I know I make some mistakes, but I, I know I can go to my God and confess. Say amen, somebody. Tell them you don't determine my salvation. Uh, tell them I'm, God, I'm glad that sal if salvation was something that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. But I thank God that even though I've fallen short, that God still loves me. And that's good news right here today that the Lord still loves you. I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad to know that the Lord still loves me. I don't always deserve his love, but the Lord still loves me. I know I go contrary to his will sometimes, but the Lord still loves me. How many are glad about that today, that the Lord still loves you? So now Joseph right now is finding himself in our check at Potiphar's house. First of all today, I want to look at the position that Joseph is in right now. When he came to Egypt, Joseph dropped down from the position of the coat of many colors to the position of a slave. Remember now, Joseph himself, he, he, while he was in Canaan, Joseph I, had been given a coat of many colors. He was, a favorite, he was a favorite child. Joseph then talked about a dream that he had that he would be over his brothers and they would bow down to him. Joseph was on his high horse while he was there, but now Joseph had been reduced down to the level of a slave. Uh, don't, don't think too high of yourself, because things have a way of changing. You might be up today. It used to be growing up in Georgia because you could be down tomorrow, but I learned something better. I learned you could be up today and be down the very same day. That you don't have to wait for tomorrow to come. Some things to change in that very same day. Now here we find Joseph. Uh, he had been sold now to the, an officer of Pharaoh. 
uh, named Potiphar. He had, he had bought him from the hands of the Ishmaelite. When he bought him, he brought him into his own house. Amen, somebody. He brought him into his house and made him overseer of his entire house. Last week, we looked at him in the pit. But today, we find that he's at Potiphar's house. Uh, uh, the promotion says Joseph not only worked well, but also he worked better than all the other slaves and displayed much character. He would have to show much integrity, be put in charge of Potiphar's house, and trust with all that Potiphar had. The text said in two that the Lord was with Joseph. I told you that's our reading theme this month, that the Lord was with Joseph. And because the Lord is no respect of person, just like he was with Joseph, the Lord will be with you, and the Lord will be with me. The text said that he was a prosperous man. The word prosperous here means to be successful. And our materialistic today, it is hard for us to perceive Joseph as being successful, for he was only a slave. But our text said Joseph was successful in the fact that God was with him. See, my success is not on what I have, but my success on who has me. <laughs> so I might not have a whole lot, but as long as I have King Jesus, do I have a witness in here? As long as I have King Jesus, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. His master saw that the Lord was with him. Though he was a slave, Je Je Joseph so lived his life that it was evident that God was with him. In our church day language, we would say that Joseph lived such a good life that it was evident that he was a Christian. If we want to give forth a good witness, my brothers and sisters for the Lord, we cannot be slack in our performance. The Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. The key to the way of being a part of a household was the presence of Joseph. The key to the way of being of any society or nation is the presence of godly people. See, godly people are worth more to a nation than all of the other natural advantages and resources. My brothers and sisters say good military defense is legitimate for a nation, but its best protection comes from the protection that only God can provide for this nation. So now he finds himself at Potiphar's house. Uh, but even though he was sold in the slave right, while he was at Potiphar's house, he did not have the mindset of a slave. Uh, he worked the very best he could and he was elevated while he was at Potiphar's house. What did you say? The pastor, I'm saying, whatever your position is, uh, be faithful where the Lord has placed you. Be faithful in your service. Uh, when you're serving, you ought to do it as unto the Lord. Uh, the Lord deserves our best in service. Uh, we are going to be slack when it comes to serving the Lord. Uh, if you're going to serve the Lord, you got to realize that payday will come after a while. Uh, I don't know how you feel, but I'm so glad that, that everything that was in part of his house uh, was blessed because of Joseph. Uh, even though Joseph was thrown in the pit a few chapters earlier, uh, now he finds himself at part of his house. Uh, you may be down right now, my brothers and sisters. Uh, I want you to know the things can turn around and things can turn around real quickly for you you may be going through right now but how many of you know going through does not last forever and because it don't last forever you ought to be able to look beyond where you are and see where God is getting ready to take you to have anybody here that can look beyond your present situation and see what the Lord has in store for you to have anybody here that can look beyond your gloom to see your glory to have anybody here that can look beyond your burdens and see your blessing. To have anybody here that can look beyond your midnight and see a bright morning coming your way. Uh, to have anybody here that can look beyond your enemies and see the friends that God has placed in your life. To have anybody here that can look beyond your stepping, your stumbling block and see your stepping stones. Uh, to have anybody here that can look beyond your troubles and see a bridge over your troubled water to have anybody here that can look beyond where you are and say God is still in the blessing business to have anybody here just glad to be
be in the number one more time. Uh, do I have anybody here that's glad to be alive one more day? Uh, do I have anybody here? You may not be feeling a hundred percent, but you serve a God who's a hundred percent able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think uh, according to the power that working within us. Do I have anybody here that's hurting on the inside, but you know you still have joy? Is there anybody testimony that after all that I've been to, that I still, uh, I said I still uh, have joy? Is there anybody here that's early on this Sunday morning that still have joy? I got joy on the inside that'll show up on the outside. Uh, this joy that I have uh, that the world didn't give it uh, and the world can't take it away. Uh, do I have any believers in here that still uh, have joy? I feel a praise in here. Do I have anybody here that still have joy? I may have to cry sometime, but I still have joy. Taking medicine to go to sleep and medicine to get up, but I still have joy. My heart's been broken, but I still have joy. Had to share some midnight tears, but I still have joy. If you have joy, let me hear you if you still, if you still, if you still, if you still, I still have joy. The Lord was with Joseph even while he was at Potiphar's house. In spite of his position as a slave, he was faithful and the Lord elevated him and he found favor with Potiphar. What are you saying, Pastor? The Lord is telling me that maybe the reason your elevation has not occurred because you're not faithful where you are. If I'm a part of the choir, I need to be faithful. I can't pick my practice time. I need to be faithful. No, but we say something now. Well, they're going to miss me. They got other voices. Well, what are the other voices thought the way you were thinking? Be faithful. If you're going to be an usher, be faithful. If you're going to be in ministry, be faithful. And guess what? If you're going to be a member, be faithful. And God elevates us because of our faithfulness. He was a slave, but he was faithful. And the Lord was with Joseph. Second thing. Ah, the text said that look at his position, but I want you now to look at the proposition. Not just his position, look at the proposition. Uh, Joseph 39 and 6. Part of a wife now tried to seduce Joseph. She tried to tempt Joseph. Watch this, let no man say that when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Evil temptation is not of God. God does not tempt us with evil. That's of the devil. That's of the adversary. But that is not of God. Now, part of a wife shows us some of the common ways in which temptations work. She said in the text that was moved past six to seven and the rest of one time she told him, I want you to lie with me. In other words, lay with me. That didn't get him. Then she said, I want you to lay beside me. That didn't get him. Then I want you to be with me. Didn't stop. Proposition. Watch this. Temptation is always to corrupt, to do evil in some way. Temptation is never a temptation to do good. You can spot temptation simply by the fact it's a solicitation to do evil. Therefore, if you have good conviction about right and wrong, you would immediately recognize temptation by its emphasis on evil. 
The text said that Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. His master, Potiphar's wife, cast her eyes upon Joseph. I'm in 6 and 7 of the 39th verse now. In other words, he wasn't bad on the eyes. Joseph wasn't bad to look at. We normally think of a man seeing a beautiful girl and making a wicked proposition to her. But here it is reversed now with a woman looking at a handsome man. Oh, I wish I had a little help right here. The description of Joseph is clouded by the English translation goodly, meaning he was way of favor, meaning one who has a good figure, strong looking and beautiful face to look at. She cast her eyes upon Joseph and said she let her eyes dwell on the forbidden. Be careful and looking too long at something you want. Because it will allow you to go somewhere you don't want to go and stay somewhere you don't want to stay. Huh? Y'all praying with me in here? Thus the temptation began with the eye gate. As it often begins in many temptations. If we let our eyes feast on the forbidden, we will fall in the sin. One of the most effective approaches to sin is through the eye gate. His master wife said, lie with me. In other words, that was her eye candy. I can't get no help in here today. That was her eye candy. Wasn't bad on the eyes at all. Let me trace eye candy this morning and see can I visit your area this morning. As I look over the congregation a few years back, you, you may have said your eye candy in this generation was Billy D. William. Your eye candy may have been Denzel Washington. Or your eye candy may have been Mark Blair Underwood. Let me see, can I bring it a little modern now? In, in the middle section eye candy, it may be Morris Chestnut, Boris Kojo. Idris Elder. Let me see, can I bring a look closer to this generation? It may be Carmen, maybe Drake, maybe Tyrese, maybe D'Angelo, maybe Trey Song. Whatever is not bad, whatever you please to look at becomes your eye candy. Now have a witness in him. Temptation is vigilant in that it observes your situation and strikes when you are most vulnerable to fall. When you're at your weakest moment, when you're most, most vulnerable to give in, then temptation will come your way when you're at your lowest point. But here temptation, watch this. This came right after Joseph was having success in Potiphar's house. After Joseph was having success, temptation was right around the corner. See, success can make one become proud and become more vulnerable because you would think everything you have is based on your ability rather than your availability with God to be able to use you. So he became vulnerable at this point. Oh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we got to be careful when we are having a low moment and be careful when you're having your high moment. And then he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. Uh, then she went and approached him. Watch this in the text. It said, when there was none of the men of the house were around. Watch yourself now. She waited till everybody else was, was out of the house. All along with him. He was a slave. She was Potiphar's wife. And she was the master's wife. So he took his orders from Potiphar and he was going to take his orders, she thought, from his wife. So she waited till everybody was, was gone. In other words, uh, 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 she, she came out with scandal long before Kerry Washington. I wish I had a little help in here. Uh, just, just, just a little bit of help in here this morning. Tent patient was revealed in a two-fold uh, way. First, it was real in her conduct, lie by her or be with her. When she could not get Joseph, when he refused, she didn't then try to get him to come and be with her. And when he would not, she tried again and again. She did not stop one time. See, temptation doesn't come one time and leave you alone. 
Temptation would come back again, back again, and back again. All these moves were deceitful moves to trap Joseph into an original proposition. Temptation likes to disguise itself as something else. It says if you won't drink with the boys, you can at least go with the boys and visit with them while they drink. Beware of subtle temptation. Beware of the deceitfulness of temptation. It was revealed in concealment. There were none of the men around. But see, they were not in the house, but watch this. They were on the outside close enough to hear. Mm. We're not in the house close enough to hear. Many would do in private what they would not do in public. Pilots would wives play those tactics of secrecy to make her proposition effective. First, it was vigorous that it was persistent. Genesis 39 and 10 said, day by day, she approached him. Day by day, she approached him. Pilots of wives was working on Joseph. She never let up. Temptation gains in power when it hits you every day. Oft time it is the persistence of temptation that defeats us. Therefore, we must never let our guard against evil. Second is that the pressure. It said that she caught him, grabbed him by this garment. He started to run. And when he ran, he left his garment behind when he ran. Oh, my God. She kept after him day by day. Oh, tell him how good he looked. Tell him how he was ripped and buff. Just setting him up every day. Oh, only if Potiphar looked half as good as you look. Just set him up every day. Then when she made a move when nobody else was around. Surely he cannot turn down this. Not all, all of this. Surely he, he must be crazy. He, 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 he can't turn down all of this. Uh, so when she went for him, she thought he would reach back for her. But he knew that she was his master's wife. And he knew that that was wrong. And that he would not only violate his master, but he would violate the God that he served. And so he began to run away and she grabbed his garment. Temptation can be very aggressive. Uh, temptation can be very aggressive. Temptation can be very aggressive. In this modern time, the uh, uh, temptation don't care nothing about you being married. I wish y'all would hear me. Don't care nothing about you being married. Temptation, consider that safe. You married, you ain't got no bunch of time. I just want a little bit of your time. Tem temptation can be very, can be very aggressive. Amen, somebody. They, they will continually come. It will force you to do evil if you don't stay in God's will. My brothers and sisters, the pressure to sin, in spite of the circumstances, no excuse. Evil is not content to simply give solicitation. We've got to be willing to stand and do what the Lord has required us to do. Verse 10 said, It came to pass that she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. It came to pass about this time, verse 11, that Joseph went into the house to do his business. He was going to work. And that was none of the men of the house that was there. She had conveniently had them all on the outside. Verse 12, since she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me, he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, right? Then she began to scream. Then she began to scream afterward. So those outside now could hear her. And she had in her hand what she considered to be evidence. I have his garment. What kind of man would run away from all of this and leave his garment? I have his garment, which is evidence of what he was trying to do. Oh, let me drop something free here and bless somebody here. Somebody here, I want you to know that the garment is not always the evidence. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. That the garment is not always evident. Because this evidence was made up of a lie. And sometimes people will use a lie to try to destroy your home, try to destroy your marriage, and try to destroy your relationship. I wish I had a praying church. The garment was not evident that something wrong had been done. But the garment was nothing but that of a lie manufactured by part of his wife. 
Don't you get so caught up in being out of shape. Just because you read a text through your husband or through your friend saying that's not evidence. Just because there's an email sent that says one thing, that's not evidence. Just because you've been going through the phone and see the same number showing up over and over again, that's not evidence. Just because your friends have told you something they heard, that's not evidence. Just because there's lipstick on the collar, that's not evidence. Just because the smell of perfume is not the perfume you wear, that's not evidence. Just because you see him talk with somebody after church don't mean that's his girlfriend. That's not evidence. Y'all ought to, somebody ought to be getting blessed in here. That's not evidence, my brothers and sisters. You don't throw away a 10, 15, 20 years of a marriage, 10, 15, 20 years of a relationship based off what somebody's saying, uh, based off what you think. You say, well, Pastor, what if it is true? If it is true, do you have forgiveness in your heart? If it is true, you don't throw away something you know you got for what what something look like for what something may appear you may be propositioned somewhere but I stopped by to tell you that if God is on your side that God can bring all that stuff together you don't give up on your marriage don't give up on your wife don't give up on your husband don't give up on your children don't give up on your relationship because the evidence is not always true Good God of my not always true. Somebody in here wish you'd have brought your significant other today, don't you? Because you've been dealing with some of this stuff right here. He's left his garment and his flag. This is the second time Joseph's coat has been used to mislead people. First, his brothers used his coat to deceive his father. Now, part of her wife is going to use that same coat in order to deceive him again. But third and finally, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that as Potiphar made his way back home, his wife met him, and she told him what had happened with Joseph. And when his master heard the words of his wife, his wrath was kindled. And view of the punishment, he had Joseph to be thrown in the prison. Joseph was thrown in the prison for something he did not do, all because of what happened at Potiphar's house. But the good news, as I give it a close today, that even though he was thrown in the prison, our text closes by reminding us, if you go down to 22 and 23, that Joseph Master put him in the prison, a place where the king prison as well. But it said that Joseph found favor even while he was in the prison. And then the warden of the prison, the guard said, they put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners because they knew that the Lord was with you. In other words, when the presence of the Lord is with you, regardless of whether you find yourself in the pit, regardless of whether you find yourself at part of his house, I want you to know that the presence of the Lord is with you. Today we look at his position. We look at the proposition and we look at the presence of the Lord. That the presence of the Lord was with Joseph. So what are you saying to us, Pastor? I don't know who I'm speaking to today. I don't know what your challenge is today. But I want you to know that you're not by yourself. That the presence of the Lord is with you. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me, my brothers and my sister. There will come time where you will be lied on and lied about. But I want you to know that the presence of the Lord is with you. I want you to know that there are times that you will find yourself in a battle. Oh, oh, oh. But I stop by to remind somebody that the battle is not yours. But the battle is the Lord. Uh, and all I have a witness of when the presence of the Lord is with you, that the Lord will fight your battle. Do I have a witness in here? If you just keep your hand in the Lord's hand, I am a living witness that the Lord will fight your battle. I ought to have somebody here that ought to be glad that whatever you're going through, uh, that the Lord is with you. Somebody here has a medical challenge uh, and you don't know how you're going to deal with it. Uh, I stopped by to tell you that God still has uh, all healing power. 
right in the hem of his garment. And there's somebody here today that know that the Lord is a healer. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody here that ever received some bad news from the doctor? Does anybody know that God is a healer? I ought to have a witness in here that will raise our hand and say, heal my body. Ah, uh, now I want to run on and tell what the Lord can do. Uh, do I have a witness in here? How many know that the Lord is with you? It doesn't matter what things look like. Uh, I stop by to tell you the Lord is able to work it out. Uh, and the Lord will work it out for your good. Uh, I'm going to have a praiser in here now. Uh, say, I didn't know how I was going to come out of that situation. But the Lord stepped in right in on time. How many know he's a God who'll step in on time? How many know as dotty people used to sing that he's an on time God? Somebody say, oh yeah, say oh yes, say oh yes, say oh yes. Dotty people say, yes he is, he is an on time God. And how many you know because he's on time that the long is still in the blessing business? How many know that you're blessed in here today? Is there anybody here ever been accused of doing something wrong? But won't the Lord fix it? Won't the Lord make a way for you? Won't the Lord open the door for you? Anybody ever lied on you on the job and tried to get you fired off the job? But how many of you know that God is still blessed you? How many have been laid off a job? But you never miss the meal. You never miss paying your rent. You never miss paying your mortgage cause God will I said God will he'll step right in on time I ought to have a few praises in here just to wave their hand say the Lord is with me tell them I've had some good days and some bad days but the Lord is with me I've heard some ups and some downs but the Lord is with me I've almost been leveled to the ground but the Lord Lord is with me. I felt like giving up and throwing in the towel, but the Lord is with me. I had somebody to leave me, but the Lord is with me. I've been broke down to my last day, but the Lord is with me. Do I have any praises in here? Just a praise God, cause the Lord is with me. I feel a praise right in here. The Lord is with you right now. How many know I feel him on my left? I feel him on my right feel him in my front I feel him on my back that the Lord is with me I don't know how you feel but I've heard something I've heard I've heard I've heard I've heard the thunder roll do I have a witness in here I've seen I've seen I've seen the lightning flash I felt I felt sin break a dashing beneath my soul but because of who God is I, I can thank God anyhow you heard the choir say you got a right to praise him is there anybody here is there anybody here that got a right to praise him I dare you to exercise your right right now I give you permission right now to exercise your right to praise him is there anybody here that feel like blessing his name is there anybody here that part of a house can't keep me down cause no matter where I go that the Lord is with me if you know the Lord is with you throw your hand up in the air and shout Emmanuel 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 that the Lord is with me tell your enemies you can't stop me tell your enemies you can't block me tell your enemies you can't hurt me because the Lord 
Lord, because the Lord, because the Lord is with me. Is there anybody here that know that the Lord is with you? How do I know he's with you? You didn't make it here all by yourself. The Lord is with you. When your alarm clock went off, it wasn't the alarm clock that woke you up. That the Lord is with you. Shout thank you. Shout thank you. Shout thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Shout thank you. I dare you to praise him. Is there anybody here that just feel like praising him? Is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that love my Lord? Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Anybody, is there anybody here that'll give my God the praise? That'll give my God the glory? Open up your mouth, put those hands together, and say nobody, say nobody, say no, 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 say nobody, say no, 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 say nobody, say, say nobody, 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 say the Lord. The Lord was with Jotham last week in the pit, and he'll be with you in your pit. The Lord was with Jotham at Potiphar's house. Remember last week, Jotham didn't deserve to be in the pit because of jealousy. He was thrown in the pit. There are some people who don't like you and you haven't done anything to them. But because of that jealous spirit that dwells within them, they've already formed an attitude pit about you. Let me tell you what I learned in 19. I'm a 20 years of pastor. Over 37 years of heading a business organization. If somebody don't like you, ain't a whole lot you gonna do to change that mind. Save yourself some time. Save yourself some energy. Use that time and energy in a more productive way somewhere else. Because if you haven't done anything for them to dislike you, they don't like you, ain't nothing you can do for them to like you. Speak to them, greet them, show them love. Don't walk past them and be nasty with them, show them love. But, that, but don't stay there too long. Remember I said you better learn to give a benediction to some stuff. We get the benediction on Sundays. We're getting ready to do what? Leave. So if I'm finna get ready to leave you alone, I need to give you the benediction. I'm not giving you the call to worship. I got to give you the benediction. I got to love you at a distance. Second, because that jealous spirit threw him in the pit. Now, the day at Potiphar's house, and the road is verse the same way, just like Miss Potiphar aggressively seduced Joseph. There are men out there who are aggressively seducing women. It, this story just happened to be about Miss Potiphar and Joseph, but it's reversed the other way. All the time. I say to our officers, when you're making your deacon's visit, you are not to be visiting no single lady all the time by yourself. The Bible says stay away from the appearance of evil. Hmm? There are certain things that we must do 
as men, you don't let another woman come up and disrespect your wife. Y'all feeling me? I can't be talking to my wife and you gonna walk in the middle of the conference. Oh no, it ain't gonna happen like that. Uh uh. But Pastor got to, I'm talking to my wife, you can wait a second. Because when you leave him, when I leave, I gotta go home with her. Uh huh. And the, and, and the policy of wives, day by day, every chance she get. That's why you can't have too much conversation with the opposite part about what's going on in your house. Number one, it ain't their business. You see what I'm saying? You don't be telling them what your wife is doing and not doing. Because in their mind, they think they can do it better. If it's not being done by the person you with, then you communicate with the person that you're with. Y'all ain't feeling me. That's how you keep the relationship tight. And then finally, always show respect for one another. My wife be mad with me all the time, but y'all don't know. She be sitting over there just a smiling, waving her hand, getting up. That don't mean she be, I, I've done something on the way here. Or something like that. Some, some point within a few hours, I've done something, y'all. I, I, I'm known to do something to make her mad. So, so I may have been past my four-hour grace period or something, but, but, but it happened. Some of them say that they're going to make her mad. But I, 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 they said the dog because I think I got a permanent one built around the house. I, I just stay in trouble most of the time. Y'all keep praying for me because I stay in trouble. Amen. Just give me some practical things because your Potiphar's house could be a drug addiction. Don't have to be sexual. Your Potiphar experience could be alcohol. If it's alcohol, you ain't got to be going to go into no club with nobody. Amen. You're not that strong. You can't handle that temptation that's going on around you. Your, 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 your part of experience could be just a hustle, always trying to beat somebody out of self. Why are everybody trying to get over? Why don't we just work and do the right thing? Why do we have cable running out of our house from somebody else's house? Why are we buying clothes out of the car from folks with dealer tags? Why are we giving folk a hundred dollar for that two or three hundred dollar EBT card stuff? Why everybody got a hustle? I know you, I'm finna move on. Let us stay. If we just do things the right way and trust God. Let me tell you something. There's no easy way to get rich. The only place you're going to find success coming before work is in the dictionary. Where S come before W. But in this life, you got to work in order to be successful. Amen, somebody. You got to do it. And I, I just never want, I want to be a good steward. I just can squander money on, 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 on things that might hurt or deter my body. I work too hard for it, so I can't, I can't do that. That's just not me. I can't sit in the car and give somebody 5 or $10, tell them to get me a scratch off. That's just not me, y'all. I work too hard for them. You said, Reverend, but if I did and hit it big, can I, would you take it at the church? You should not just bless the church, bless your pastors where you are. Let us say the door of the church is open. There might be somebody today up under the sound of my voice want to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand, but give God your heart. You may come by letter by your Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God, whosoever will let them come. 
it's good to attend church but it's a wonderful feeling to be a part of a church family we would love to have you a part of our growing church family we need one another I would love to serve as your under shepherd to the great shepherd serve as your pastor during your time of joy as well as your time of sadness we promise you that we will always be there for you the door of the church is open as a choir leads us in our invitation to him yes 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 Will you lean on him today? Oh, I'm finding. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Said one more time, I'm learning. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm finding. It's prayer time at the altar. Will you make your way to the altar for prayer? It's prayer time at the altar. Make your way to the altar for prayer. If you put your left foot out and your right foot out and put them together, they'll bring you to the altar. <laughs> 